Namaste. Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today's subject is the Force and the Divine Force, Part 12, from Sri Aurobindo. An activity of the astral plane in contact with the astral forces attended by a leaving of the body is not a spiritual aim but belongs to the province of occultism. It is not a part of the aim of yoga. Also, fasting is not permissible in the ashram as its practice is more often harmful than helpful to the spiritual endeavor. This aim suggested to you seems to be part of a seeking for occult powers. Such a seeking is looked on with disfavor for the most part by spiritual teachers in India because it belongs to the inferior planes and usually pushes the seeker on a path which may lead him very far from the divine. Especially a contact with the forces and beings of the astral or as we term it the vital plane is attended with great dangers. The beings of this plane are often hostile to the true aim of spiritual life and establish contact with the seeker and offer him powers and occult experiences only in order that they may lead him away from the spiritual path or else that they may establish their own control over him or take possession of him for their own purpose often representing themselves as divine powers they mislead give erring suggestions and impulsions and pervert the inner life many are those who attracted by these powers and beings of the vital plane have ended in a definitive spiritual fall or in mental or physical perversion and disorder one comes inevitably into contact with the vital plane and enters it in the expansion of consciousness which results from an inner opening. But one ought never to put oneself into the hands of these beings and forces or allow oneself to be led by their suggestions and impulsions. This is one of the chief dangers of the spiritual life and to be on one's guard against it is a necessity for the seeker if he wishes to arrive at his goal. It is true that many supraphysical or supernormal powers come with the expansion of the consciousness in yoga to rise out of the body consciousness, to act by subtle means on the supraphysical planes, etc., are natural activities for the yogi. But these powers are not sought after. They come naturally, and they have not the astral character. Also, they have to be used on purely spiritual lines, that is, by the divine will and the divine force, as an instrument, but never as an instrumentation of the forces and beings of the vital plane. To seek their aid for such powers is a great error. If sadhana is a struggle between the higher will and the old forces of nature bringing suffering and inner torment, we do not want you to do that kind of sadhana. That is not the spirit of our yoga. What we want you to do is to recover your quietude 
and go on in that. To have the basis of quietude and allow the divine force to work in you firmly and quietly is always the best method. It is not necessary to proceed through a big personal effort, disturbance and struggle. Come back to this. Open yourself once more as you did before. Then you got back sleep or health in a day or two and were growing inwardly without excessive trouble. And let the mother's power and grace lead you. I shall do all to help you and pull you out. But that which has closed itself in you must open for the help to work quickly as it did before. Otherwise, too, it can pull you out. But if there is this strong obstruction that has to be undone, time is needed. A central change of attitude in your mind would, I believe, make all the difference. It has done before. It is sufficient if you can keep in touch with the force and reject any strong attack of the confusion. The rest will be done by the force itself, for none is really strong enough to change himself. It is the divine force called down that does it. To open to the divine forces with a quiet and strong aspiration, to become conscious of their working, to allow quietly that working and calmly to contain it, seconding it with one's aspiration, getting more and more knowledge and understanding of what is being done as one goes on. This is the sound and natural way of the yoga. It is the quietness in which the force can act and an entire reliance on that force to do for you what is necessary and for the rest a quiet vigilance, not to consent to the confusion and restlessness that you must achieve. It has been evident throughout since the working in you began that this is the only possible foundation for your sadhana. That is the right way to keep the peace of the higher consciousness then, even if there is a vital disturbance, it will be only on the surface. The foundation will remain till the force can release the true vital. <laughs>